And we are live. Yes, sir. Woo! I like that. Oh, oh he just rock with that. He just rock with that. Hip hop. Oh. Yeah, man, let's just go. Another black man shot down by the beast. When yeah. Oh, no. Cap got black ball kneeling in peace. Bringing the wind. Big shout out, Sauce people. Money. Legend. And we should all be annoyed. CV got the whole world unemployed. Neighborhoods got destroyed. What happened with George Floyd was something we just couldn't avoid. And of course they lied. Made us feel inferior. Stripped of our pride. Access been denied. But once we learned how to ride, movement was worldwide. Black Lives Matter. Know you're gonna hate this. Founded by George Soros, a racist. Why he get faceless? Niggas get bracelets. Handcuffed fuck still stuck in the matrix. I hope you bought your luggage. Good, because here's a fun fact. Brooklyn Streets was named after slave owners. Damn, now that's some shit to unpack. Hey, yo, Trump, man, you talking about the wrong thing, man. Cap wasn't protesting the flag. But anyway, you only in the White House for one thing, man. Do your motherfucking job. Living in the dolphin stomach. Upside down. Oh, man, you could have ran that whole joint right there, bro. He murdered that shit, boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up, my brother? Oh man, all is well, all is well, all is well, bro. How was how was your week, man? Oh, the week was beautiful. Actually, the, the, the week was phenomenal. Um, I was uh invited to join this special private economic cooperative that's popping off right now. Got the nice. battery in my back, so I feel real good about life. If y'all want to know what I'm talking about, hit me on the inbox, Hakeem Green, madism.info, and we'll connect. But I say game changer, game changer. And then on top of it, I got a special package from the God, the legend. My uncle Red Alert sent me a dope shirt right here, boy. Woo! You know what I mean? Elements of hip hop. That look like something I need, right there. I need y'all to go check out Uncle Red for real, for real. Word up, and, and, uh, Uncle Red. You know, red alert, no doubt. And, uh, you know, I can't complain, bro. I can't complain. Things, things, you know, the Rona numbers just skyrocketed in Florida. You know, jokers can't stay in the house in summer. You know, you want to hit the beach. And now they relocking, they relocking everything down, sheltering places, shutting it down. But, hey, man, you know. I mean, it's a little know? crazy, you know. Me personally, man, I don't really go out, man. I keep it in the crib. I try not to go out too much, man, because you know that second wave is coming, baby. And it's like all it takes is one. All it takes is one to step out and yeah, get man. everybody else infected and bada bing, bada boom. So, Because it multiplies, you know. It's, it's, it's math and science, bro. One turns to two, two turns to four, four turns to eight, eight turns to 16. That's how and goes. like that, you got the whole that city. Math Stick. is non-debatable. Word is bond. One and one is two. But yeah, man, one so one um, is definitely two. You know, I'm 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 feeling good. I called you today actually while you was in the middle of your workout, which is always good. Every time I call you, you you working out, you having some some green juice and which is good, man. It's just a, it's good to be around people that's uh living that lifestyle, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. word. It's like uh, you know, take the time, you know. You know, I used to spend a lot of time on punishment when I was a kid, you know. <laughs> Second market period, report cards come in. I'd be on punishment from like the middle of February to like May. <laughs> so it, it was like it was like training for the for the corona lockdown, the shelter in place <laughs> yeah. lockdown. So this is easy for me, you know what I mean? Good way to look at it. <laughs> Very good way to look at it, my brother. You know, so hey man, big shout out to mom for keeping me on punishment, you know, get right, me prepared can, can for- give, Can we give mom a round of applause? <laughs> yeah, word, big shout out my Dukes, no well, doubt. Mom Dukes deserve, deserve a, a round of applause, boy, because I know I was- Yeah, a man. I was uh, a you know what I mean? I was a hamper. I, I was right there with you on punishment, man. <laughs> Poor cars just coming. First more period, second and third were all crazy, so Ooh, you know. Word. <laughs> You know, and you know, when it's like February, like my, my birthday would come in right before the report cards came. So I always get my birthday gift. But two weeks later, 
She's taking the birthday gifts, packing them up, putting in the closet. <laughs> Can't touch them. I'm on punishment. And then, you know, Man. March, April come around. The weather starts to break. And you see everybody else outside. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yo, man, the up there. <laughs> in oh, the crib trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? The but good old, the good old days, the good old days. <laughs> the yo, good old so, days. So let's, so let's talk about who, who who do we have on this show today, my brother? Oh man, bro. Like, you know, there's benchmarks in my career, right? And there's certain things that happened early, early on before I really was even seriously writing and seriously trying to be an artist. And one of those benchmark projects was Two Kings in a Cypher. The mm. video moving on them produced by my big brother, Barry Bookhard. Big shout out to him. And uh, big shout out to Dorinda, no doubt, the director. You know, and you know, I met these guys, D-Dot and Amin Ra, Ra Lawrence, together formed the group Two Kings in a Cypher. And uh, the video was called, the single was called Moving On Them. And this mm. year, they're celebrating the 30th anniversary of that project. Um, D-Dot and Ron together are the founding members of the production team Hitman. Of nice. Bad Boy Hitman, you know what I mean? So, like, the projects that they've been a part of, the things that they've seen over the many, many years, it's like the Moving On Them single was just a way to kick in the door and then, you know, they just kind of bum rushed the whole scene. So we, we want to talk about that project moving on them, 30 year anniversary, you know, kind of the things that led up to that project. And uh, yeah, that's what we're doing today. Big shout out to these two brothers that's going to be with us very, very shortly. Yeah, I'm excited. I think this is going to be a cool one. I mean, a lot of history there. Um, and I mean, 30 years is uh, quite an accomplishment, right? I mean, they're, part of, they're a part of history. Like in, many ways, in, a, right? in a major, major, major way. Like even when we see like the versus battles, the producer versus battles, and you know, everybody's going, yo, what's up with the hitman? Or what's up with, it's like D-Dot and Ron are responsible for some of the biggest records in music history. Hip hop, yeah, yeah, hip hop, rap music, yeah. No, we talking about music history. When we talking about super producers, two great examples of what, producers, super producers look like. And there's so many other things they've been involved in filmmaking, you know, artist development, music executives, signing artists, developing artists, consulting, you know, so many pegs on their, 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 their pole. Like, you know, I don't, I don't even want, I'll let them tell you, you know, more about it, but yeah, man, it's just crazy, bro. It's such a tremendous uh, honor to have those two brothers on Madism Mondays, no doubt. That's what's up, yeah. man. Well, shoot, I'm looking forward to that. Now, didn't um, didn't Ron Lawrence produce uh something for you? No doubt. Uh, Ron Lawrence and I are actually working on a, a EP. Ooh. And the first, yeah, oh 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Ron Lawrence, the God, the God, the God, the the Amin Ra of the production. Wait a minute, did you just say that you and Ron Lawrence are putting together an EP. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, we, we like, we three songs deep right now. The last joint we did, oh my God, it's, I'm gonna I'm a send you a sneak peek, brother. It's gonna blow your mind, yo. When right, you hear you what we me, just can, did. Can you, send, can you send me a sneak peek with an open space for a verse? <laughs> for a verse? Hey. Nah, uh, <laughs> I think that one, no, that was in the can, but. But we got four more. You got to get your own. <laughs> you got to get your own. <laughs> no, nah, nah, but we got four more to do. And of course, we got to represent the Madison movement. So my, my partner in the, in, on the Madison Mondays, got a, I got a little 16 spot for you. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. No, no so doubt. what's the name of the joint that, Um, because I know you said you had a video that you guys put out. No, we, uh, the, we don't have a video yet. That's that's soon come. Once we, well, I, I, I figure out. a joint that's available on iTunes, right? I mean, on uh, it's YouTube. not even available on, on you on YouTube. Yeah, it's called Niganometry, oh, uh, nice produced name. by Ron Lawrence, and it features Malik Youssef from good okay, from, from good so that's not good music on uh, YouTube yet. It's on available on YouTube. You can hear the song, but you know it's not available for purchase. You can't download it unless you rip it off of YouTube okay. and feel free. You know, do what you do. It's the internet. We we know okay. what the world is, but uh, you know it's it's message oriented music. You know, message oriented music. No doubt. Right. 
man. Shoot, I'm trying to see if we could give the viewers a little sneak peek of this right here. I'm looking oh, yeah, it. please do. Let them, let them hear what it is. Nigonometry. And, right, uh, so check you know, this out, man. I think what we'll do is mm -hmm. play this Hakeem Green featuring Malik Youssef Nigonometry record produced by Ron Amin Ra. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get into like a couple of records on the vinyl set. I'm, you know, DJ Folkies is gonna take the one, you know, grab the ones and two. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, records. yeah. With and vinyl, then, ladies and gentlemen, with vinyl. vinyl. All vinyl set, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then um, we'll get into this amazing. Interview. Yeah. So we're gonna take this time while we playing some joints. We're gonna invite and share and get as many people in this building as possible. All the Absolutely. folks that are watching us right now, please share, 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 share. Invite your peoples because when I say. Two kings in a cipher is about to come with some jewels. They coming about with some jewels, bro. They about to come with some jewels, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with it. All right, well, shoot. Let me, uh, let's get on this joint real quick and see what we working with. Mm-hmm. See what it's looking mm. like, my brother. Nigonometry. Next level math. Trigonometry. You hear that? <laughs> no. All right, very... Me? Very quiet, very, very faint. All right, hold on, we're going to get this right. You know, we're going to get this right. Okay, I know why. Give me one second, my brother. Yeah, people in the building, while we holding on, waiting for folk easy to get it, get it crispy, once you guys hit that share button, invite your friends, let them know we got something going over here at Matters of Mondays on Hakeem Green's page and on Focus page. You know, get people in the building. We got some special, special treats. We got the the gods, D Dot, Derek Angeletti, and the god Ron Amin Ra Lawrence together, known as Two Kings in a Cipher. Also the foundational, the foundation of the Hitmen production team, responsible for some of the biggest hits in hip hop history. And uh, you know, Brooklyn Queen stand up. Cause this this is hometown right here. We got D Dot from Brooklyn, Ron Lawrence from Queens, Howard University. Support your brothers. Now we good, yeah. Uh, sounds kind of crazy. You know what? I don't even want play. I don't even want play with it. I don't even want mess it. I don't want to mess it up. Let's just go right to some joints. All right, let's get let's to get some, some joints, joints man. man. Let's on. let's get some joints. Yeah. The people out there online watching us, checking us out, Nigonometry, you can check that out. Hakeem Green featuring Malik Youssef, produced by Ron, I'm in Rod Lawrence. I'll put a link up on my page if you want to hear it. Definitely worth the listen, especially with everything that's going on right now, because I'm definitely talking about those things. Me and Malik are talking about what's going on right now. So, yeah, let's, let's play some joints and advice to folks. Yeah, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, let's get to it party people. Now yeah, notice the gods got on the. I go by the name of Bokeezy, DJ Bokeezy on the ones and twos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know it, you know it. Wax, bro, wax, twelve inches. Hey, Real hip hop is in the building. Little vinyl set, man. We here having a little fun with this. You know, I got my vinyl right here. Are oh, we gonna have some fun, baby? Let's go. There we go. Cracklin' in the record sounds so crispy.
It's been a long time. I shouldn't have left you without a strong rhyme to step to. Think of how many weeks shows you slept through. Time's up. I'm sorry I kept you. Thinking of this, you keep repeating your mess. The rhyme from the microphone solo with. So you sit by the radio and on the dial soon. As you hear it, pump up the volume. Dance with the speaker till you hear it blow. Then plug in a headphone, cause here it go. It's a full letter word when it's heard to control your body to dance. So, dot text the tempo like a red alert. Reach it to reflex and let it work. When this is playing, you can't get stuck with the steps. So can say, and I'ma still come up with. I get to be swift, follow the leader. The rhyme will go deaf with the record that was mixed a long time ago. It could be done, but only I could do it. For those that could dance and clap your hands to it. I start to think, and then I sink into the paper like I was in. When I'm writing, I'm trapped in between the line. I escape when I finish the rhyme. I got soul. Go, Jersey. Go, Jersey. Go, Jersey. Go Jersey, go Jersey. Army with harmony. Yo Jersey, East Orange, North, where you at? But I brought two friends along And next on the mic is my man Hank Come on, Hank, sing that song Check it out When I'm pimp the dimp The ladies pimp The women fight for my delight But I'm the grand master with the three MCs That shop the house for the young ladies And when you come inside And to the front You do the freak break And do the bump And when the sucker MCs Try to prove a point with Tetris Trio Or with the serious joint And from sun to sun And from day to day I sit down and write a brand new rhyme I put the say that miracles never see I've created a devastating masterpiece. I'm gonna rock my mic, my so you can't resist. Everybody, I say it goes like this when I was coming home late one dark afternoon. Reporter stopped me for an interview. She said she's heard stories and she's heard fables that are vicious on the mic and the turntable. This young reporter I did adore, so I rocked the vicious rhyme like I never did before. She said, "Damn, fly guy, I'm in love with you." The Casanova legend must have been true. I said, "By the way, baby, what's your name?" I said, "I go by the name Lois Lane, and you can be my boyfriend. You surely can." Just let me quit my boyfriend called Superman. I said, he's, he's a fairy. I do some more. He's a whole fire. He's a whole fire. He's a whole fire. 
in focus. Way before it was cool, assassinated caricatures, mangling crews, deciphering the fraudulent from the real. You can't be caught without steel. If you do, the streets are eat the mail. So damn if you do, damn if you don't, damn if I won't. Bust my gun and jam hollow tips all in your throat. This is not a joke, homes. Tell me what you expect. I lose it all for the code, honor, and the respect. Easy on the set, bench press the weight of the world on my chest. The muscle tone alleviates all the stress. Paranoid, perhaps, when I'm smoking weed to the vest. My thoughts are clash with the sun, they cause the soul. No rack dick, no analysis, no proper analysis. I battle with the beast and go to war with the savages. I crack more cabbages than delicatessen. My goal is to stomp out the wackness and the back of the essence. What's my name? F O Set up. Set up. Yo, I get busy, get with me, get shifty. You glitzy, too bitty, I'm too gritty. 90s New York City. Big shout out to Ed OG. Streets grizzly, so iffy. On point like Misty, not a ballerina. Big shout out to DJ Focus on the one and twos. Misdemeanors chose hip hop instead of crime. Meticulous, go over lines. Put in work in overtime. My people know the grind. Shine, you supposed to. Money getting closer. The toaster, bless human flesh like it's kosher. Do it for the money. Do it for the culture, never for you vultures. No molly, no lean, never try to perk. Forget it, how you get it in your line of work? Yeah, that line of work. When my mind asserts, spit lines of love or lines of dirt. Some words can kill, some words can hurt. But my words show me how to avoid intervert. Get money in exchange rates, how we convert. Businessman in a sweatshirt, put it over time. I get your girl to uh. Yes. Shut up. Yeah. Hey. The world full of struggles. We bubble. See trouble. Band P and D. That's all that recognizes. Beats puzzle. Sure your beef muzzled after brief scuffle. Don't try to give me five like a quintuple. Bam, bam, rowdy, Edo, been subtle, no rebuttal, no street shit, it's an e-hustle. Bears, we guzzle, see stars like Hubble, backpack, no duffel, no gun, bare knuckles. Shoot a fair one, and run circles round the square ones. Y'all bullets stick to glass like air guns, unprepared, the mic been commandeered, son. Fuck a freestyle, I write it, then I know the rhyme. Go for mine, open line, blow your mind, intertwine through the baseline. Every time we shine, we play the win, we don't play the wine. Let's Ooh. push your fight till, till we reach our you, destiny. You, you not ready for the raw deal. Y'all need to fall back. I spit a raw rap, peace and raw rap. The hip hop you got and you now I'm the storm pack. Push your fight till we reach our destiny. These rookies haven't done enough laps around the track. I spit a raw rap, peace and raw rap. The hip hop you got and you now I mean, damn, it's been a long time. Jay Illegal, Snow Goons, we back in the house again, and this time we bring in the army. Let's go. Snow Goons, Snow Goons. Big shout out to the Snow Goons, DJ Illegal. Yeah, represent. Snow Goons, so it's the Snow Goons Infantry. Europe, where you at? Snow Goons, Snow Goons, Snow Goons. You already know you got to watch out where them snow goons go. It's the snow goons in for second. You already yeah. snow. What up, blood? What up, cuz? What up, Kiko? I tuck pistols, you tuck chains. We much different. I'm ignorant on the genius's level. Throw my dick up in the short bitch's mouth so my penis is level. Listen, I had your baby mom lick the tip of my dick. Like 80 times came on the face. Bitch, pay me mom. Wake a jigger though. Spit hotter than a who would try. Get your shooter shot. Try to boss up and rule the block. Overthrow the government. Kill the ball, shoot the cops, push rock, push try, push dough, shoot the eyes, listen to Gorilla Twist, all Gorilla's militant, Billing them is excellent invention, but some killer shit, mouth full of diamonds and all kinds of shiny shit, shinies and diamonds for all kinds of grimy shit, take that, run that, give me that, fuck that, I don't care who you call, you ain't getting nothing back, turn the motherfucking lights out, 
I'll knock your motherfucking lights out. Got the snow goons and Cody Allen with the gorilla. Fuck your life. Step your motherfucking bars up. I walk into the room, your girl gets starstruck. I fucking grinded for every single thing in my life. That's a fact. There's no such thing as hard luck. Rappers saying they harmed us. Must be lying. We don't make this track, shots be flying. You could eat all your vitamins and pump iron. Still your bitch ass wouldn't be as nice as I am. I leave bitches crying in a dark room. Huh? I'm on point like a harpoon. Huh? I'll smack a bouncer with a motherfucking bar stool. Walking through the crowd, give the guard a room. Huh? Snow coonery, flow stupidly. Bitch, I thought I told you there's no such thing as you and me. I moonwalk through your motherfucking wake and knock out the pastor saying your eulogy. Pussy snow, booms, snow, booms, snow, booms. You already know we gotta watch out where them snow booms go. It's the snow booms infantry. You already snow, snow, booms, snow, booms, snow, booms. You already know you gotta watch out where them snow booms go. It's the snow booms infantry. You already snow. Oh, shit. Oh. Yeah, fuck around and get your head bust You are not a threat, you just set bluff Talk a lot of shit when the feds rush Snitching on your friends, running around like you the man Homie, please, you sex plus I'm not the play with I be all kind of flagrant when I'm fouling Ducking all kind of agents when I'm wowing BK, where I'm from One man, one gun, one bitch, one brick Couple strips for my ones I be stunting on you niggas in my 2 oh, 16 12 through the lane Yeah, fo, I think we ready to go, bro Pearl white like Nas Chip too Mint green, drug dealer talking on you broke up Big dreams, caviar for dinner over sushi after shimi, yeah Eating with the Japanese, poly and panini squares Every hot spot is... Yeah, foe, we ready to go, bro Talking all this money talk, but homie, I don't see you there Yeah, got shots for the foes, got knots for the hoes Homie, I'll be on some other shit Got blocks for the flow, non-stop for the dough Homie, I won't hold you up a bit Cause I'll be on some other shit 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 Oh, I embrace the struggle A hustler's hustler Hit the floor running like a Barney Rubble A fresh Flintstone You could get your wig blown These young boys ain't playing out here They let that thing go No, this not a game This is real life This the ghetto, my nigga It get real trite They slay pure white And everything in between You know the goal is to get to the green The way I move and shake They calling me Hakeem the Dream Ooh, I'm a hater's worst nightmare Post it up right here Put that work in Drop the hundred pounds I'm like, yeah, yeah, and now I'm feeling better than ever. Got a new plan, but I'm still a single. Applause, applause, applause. Give it up for DJ Focus, y'all. Yes, yes, yes. Applause, yes, applause, yes, applause, yes, applause. Yes, yes. Yeah, we the applause track. We got the applause you track, no? Me? Hold on, hold on, man. Uh, hold on. Let me get this applause in here. Let me get this applause in here, man. DJ uh, Focus listen, is in the man. building. You all right? You hear me? Yeah. Yeah. You hear me? Yes. Yes. Can you. you can hear me, Hakeem? I can hear you perfect. Yep. The God, the God, the God, the God. Thanks. Yes, yes, yes. Hold on, change my God, camera God. view here, man. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us, baby. You already Yo, so know, bro. I'm, I'm, Yo. I'm shaking. I'm uh, my mic shaking off the rust from the DJ tables. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. Let, we, we, we got to get it crispy. But my, my part <laughs> is Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Rod. All right. That's oh, up. that's beautiful. I like the background. I like the background right there. I'm feeling <laughs> that right there. Let's let them nice. know what it is. Yes, sir. Oh, God. Oh, you know, so, my, my partner's multitasking, so we just want to make sure that the setup is right, make sure that he got everybody on screen at the same time, right. and we're going to hop right in. There we go. Right. So what's up, brothers, brothers? Peace, peace. Good. Thank you guys so much for being here, man. So, so ladies and gentlemen, our Mad is a Monday's audience, you know what I mean? You, you, you got a special treat this week. I say legendary brothers, truly legendary brother, brothers on so many levels. My career in the music industry, you know, unbeknownst to me, kind of starts with these brothers. I made a special pre-channel pre live cameo. <laughs> I was doing the Bart Simpson, <laughs> doing the Bart Simpson. In the moving on the video, we gonna play that a little later, you know, so y'all can check that out. And, um, you know, it's the God D dot Derek Angeletti and the God Ron Amin Ra Lawrence, together known as Two Kings in a Cipher. Make some noise, baby. Yeah, yeah. Make some noise, baby. I need some yes, more applause. Yes, Come on, yes. folks. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Word. 
Yeah, so, you know, oh, man, you like, when we say start from the beginning, like, you guys, okay, there's the beginning of Two Kings and a Cypher, all right? And then there's the, the beginning of D.Di Angeletti and Ron Amin, Ron Lawrence, in terms of, you know, you guys kind of separate trajectory, and then you guys, you know, come together. So, you know, D.Di, you know, won't you explain, you know, your path prior to Howard University and Two Kings and a Cypher, and then how that came together from the way you see it. Appreciate that. How you doing today, brother? You good? I'm great. Excellent. This is light skin. Team light skin. You know we got to stick together. Team light skin. <laughs> you know how we wish do. I, I wish I had some weed, but you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> we'll save it. We'll save it. Focus. Uh, you in the brown section. So we 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 in the light. <laughs> you and Ron, y'all in the brown section. We in the light skin over here. You know what we, what have I mean? we have a two. We have a two. A, a two. Get, a two, a two we, in the melanin, we in the melanin section. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's all melanin, bro. Right, right. <laughs> I don't burn. I tan, bro. Tan, tan. <laughs> so yeah. So for me, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. You know, um, went to Tilden High School. You know, st you know, of course, just like any other young kid growing up, hip hop hit me like a ton of bricks. And, you know, wanted to do it with nothing I can imagine. Aside from playing football, you know, I, I just knew I was going to be, you know, playing on Pittsburgh Steelers. So I really, most, those were my two passions, football and and um, and um uh rapping. I played football in high school and went on to Howard. I actually walked on to the team at Howard, but mm -hmm. I couldn't gain enough weight. So I actually semi made the team, but weight wise, I wasn't going to do it. So I can relate. Decided Trust not me. to go that I can, path. I can relate. So, right. So. Um, you know, through my travels at school, <clears throat> I don't really remember the exact time or date, but, you know, ran into Ron. Ron had already came to Howard with a little rep because he already had put records out. He was down with Herbie Lovebug. So Ron came with a little, you know, wow. he came with a little light shining on him. So, you know, um, you know, the, the chicks was migrating towards him. The, 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 the players was migrating towards him. So, you know what I'm saying? So eventually I ended up around him some way, shape or form. I, you know, he could probably tell you how we started rapping. I, I can't really, I can't really pinpoint that, but I just know we started a friendship first. He, we just, he was oh. always getting into trouble. I had to pull him out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was part of Kenny. Was <laughs> Kenny. They was known as Stone and Robert. They was <laughs> you know, how his campus. You know, so we won't talk about that. But yeah, so me and Kenny ended up getting kicked out of school our first year. So technically, we got kicked out of Howard in '86. Mm -hmm. And they let us come back in 87. So we mm -hmm. technically started our freshman year in 87, but we couldn't live in any dormitories. We couldn't participate in any type of uh, collegiate activities, if you know what I'm saying. Right, so, but right. they let us p pursue our education. And mm -hmm. so somewhere along the lines, me and Ron ended up connecting. He could probably tell you from there how the two kings and a cypher actually happened. You know what I mean? Well, well Ron, well, let's, uh, let, let's segue it over to you. Give us a brief yeah. capsule of, of your timeline leading up to meeting D-Dot and Two Kings of the Cypher? Yeah, well, for me, I mean, I was DJing and then I was rapping, you know? So there was like this little movement going on in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But I watched a lot of friends prosper and, you know, become successful. And uh, when I was living in Queens, I felt a little stagnant mm -hmm. and decided to go away to school, you know, just trying to find myself. And, um, mm -hmm. and when I got there, I brought the rap thing with me. Mm -hmm. And um, not too many people was really, they, were, they, they weren't really trying to pursue a dream into hip hop, but I saw that in D-Dot and a few other cats. And I stepped to them, I stepped to D, I stepped to Har and a few other dudes. And I was like, yo, let's start a, let's start a crew. Let's start rhyming. Let's put mm -hmm. you know, a group together. But D seemed to be the most serious. And he and I, we just kind of clicked. Mm -hmm. And then he would come to my dorm all the time. We would write rhymes. And uh, one day, um, he thought I was crazy, but um, they had this emergency student loan for like eight hundred dollars, and I took the <laughs> student loan and I bought a boombox. He bought a boombox, two <laughs> microphones. Yeah, I, 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 I can make it. <laughs> we drove it out. The the store, right? 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 Hustle is real, bro. Hustle yeah, is yeah, real. We, so we went to the. It was the Wiz. We went to the Wiz. The Wiz. Word. Yeah. Wow. And I already had the small task cam uh, double cassette, so I was like, okay, if we could. If we could play the beats on a Tascam cassette, we could record ourselves on a boombox with the two mics and we could do a little demo. So that was the idea. Oh, 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 oh. Before, you, before you go any further, for our viewers and our listeners, you gotta, ha you gotta understand how important the Tascam 2-track and making demos 
from a boom box, like, you know, microphone, boom box, the playback, and you got the, like, that's like. And Ron boom. was pause button. Ron was doing, like, oh, it was pause button. button. Yeah, yeah, pause yeah. button. Oh, he killed yeah, the button. Button. Pause yeah, tapes. Button. Pause tapes. Yeah, we, we, we was bouncing back and forth, like, doing right, two right. tracks there, going to the next uh, radio, bouncing another two tracks. We had, like, wow. we had background yeah. vocals and all kind of crap. All his, it's in not, his it was not real muffled, though, but the quality wow. wasn't good. But that was our experiment. That was just, you know, our first take on trying to put a demo together. And we right. made a record called, our first record was called Short and Deadly. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, 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 what made y'all come up with that idea? How'd that come about? <laughs> five, eight, five, seven, we was just like, yo. <laughs> right. Yeah. right, but yo, man, like, like you talking about groundbreaking moments like it's like you're at college you hustlings you know student student age uh, checks turn you know buying equipment in the college dorm room you're there to study whatever major you guys had chosen to take on but what was really going on was in the, in these rooms you know doing stuff that you know if your parents knew you was wasting their money and time doing this they probably have been upset but it ended up turning into something real beautiful now, how'd y'all come up with Two Kings and a Cypher? Because, you know, y'all know me. Y'all know how I roll. You know, especially at that point, 1989, 1990, 91. When I hear Two Kings and a Cypher, it just resonated for me. So how'd that come about, that idea of carrying that kind of torch? Yeah, well, we was trying to be different. We, was just, we didn't want to do what everybody else was doing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we kind of went the esoteric route. The, mm -hmm kinetic route, metaphysical, and we, we wanted mm -hmm. to implement those kind of things in our rhymes. Mm -hmm. And we tied that along with the, um, the five percent nation, mm -hmm. combining together. Because at the time, nobody was really, you know, everybody was doing a lot of what Chuck D was doing and KRS One. Mm -hmm. We kind of wanted to go a little left, but kind of stay in the same lane at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and and also. Um, both Ron and I grew up in hip hop, so our foundation ultimately was music. So, mm -hmm. and if you see, even in Ron, he even has the picture in the background. What we tried to portray was the past and the present, and these two combined would what would be the future would be like. Right. right. You understand? Street knowledge, book knowledge, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. You know what I mean? So. We took a little bit of 5% Nation. Now, mind you, while this is going on, we're in Howard University, which so we're getting the the black education mm -hmm. 10 times more than anywhere in Brooklyn or Queens or anywhere. Mm -hmm. We're associated with Raz Baraka and his movement in school, which was the mm -hmm. Nia Force. That's right. And, and what he had going on, and we can get into Raz later. Yeah. Our management, who we meet later on, Hak Islam, is mm -hmm. down with the Nation of Islam. Hold on, hold on. Applause, 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 please. Hit the applause button. Hockey Islam, no doubt. Islam, right. Wow. He's, he's probably tuning in right now. Yes, sir. I, he, I know he, he he needs his name mentioned, so Hawk A Islam. Yes, sir. Go to your office. Go, Go to your to office. office. <laughs> <laughs> Go to your office. <laughs> so anyway, you combine all those things and put them in a pot. That's two kings in a cipher. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, um, at the t at the moment, it might have been a little bit too much or too little. We didn't know. We were all new to the game. Mm -hmm. But this yeah, is the best we thing. Little, I, I think we were a little too much, but it was cool. And I think right. we was a little, we was a little bit ahead of our time. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Maybe early but, instead of too much. I mean, much, you know, I, I think when you look back at it now, everybody knows Amin Ra. Back then, nobody knew what Amin Ra was or D. Right, right, or right. Prophecy. Nobody knew what melanin was. Nobody knew what <laughs> cipher was. You know, but we wasn't right. talking about it in records. Mm -hmm. You know, like it, it wasn't getting talked about in that sense. And even Public Enemy, even X Clan, and the different people that we were in the mix with, poor righteous teachers in this time, ours was actually trying to be a, a lesson, so to speak. We even, you know, it's funny, I saw the roots. I want to give them props because they did this educational thing, the cartoon. Mm -hmm. They did the, the schoolhouse rock over. Ooh, well, yeah. Hak Islam and Mr. Kenny Gamble, and back then there was a Jocko Henderson. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that was his name, Jocko, I believe, from Philly. 
Mm-hmm. He was doing exactly. educational pieces back in the 80s and the 90s. So Ron and I even participated in teaching kids math and history back then by doing records. We did a record. Our goal, I, I, our goal was always to try to teach as best as we could. My mother's a my mother's a doctor. She was she's a doctor of education. She's a principal my whole life. So I come from that. Right. You know what I'm saying I believe Ron's somebody in Ron's family comes from that as well. My so, mom, my mom was a, was a, was an honors math teacher. Yeah. Right. His mom was a teacher. So. We both had that in us, regardless whether we were making records or not. There mm-hmm. was going to be lessons coming from whatever we were doing. And it mm-hmm. just so happened that rap and hip hop was there. So we figured, why not combine both the skills? And, and what, what year was this that you doing educational rap for young folks? Like putting right. the educational rap? 91. As soon as our album dropped, 1991. Wow. Those were our two kings we, we in sight. We came together in 88. We came mm-hmm. together in 88. Yeah, we got together in 88. Right. I think it was 90, yeah. Right. Hmm. Wow. So, all right, you guys, you know, you're doing it, you're working together, putting together the demo, you formed the group, you know, what got you to the record deal? What got you to that, you know, okay, we could do this. What got you to that? Um, How'd that happen? Yeah, it, it, it really started with just making, you know, buying, getting a drum machine, mm-hmm. getting the drum machine and experimenting. And that came from me, me just experimenting, working on a track. For, for salt and pepper and then end up getting a royalty check that I didn't expect. And mm-hmm. I used that to get a drum machine mm-hmm. and a keyboard and mm-hmm. started making beats in the, in, in the dorm room, you know, mm-hmm. and I, we, and, and then I had to task in a four track and we were making demos. Mm-hmm. And, um, and Ron DeBerry invited Hawk Islam to my dorm room. He's like, yo, you gotta check these dudes out. Go check them, yo, this nigga, these niggas is hot. Ron DeBerry. Ron DeBerry. Let's give a clap yeah. to Ron DeBerry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the claps to Ron DeBerry, the god. Ron DeBerry, Ron DeBerry. The, the king of the party scene, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> if you get party in DC, you know Ron DeBerry. Hawk Islam walks into my dorm room and listens to the demo, and then he's like, yo, I want to manage y'all. Mm. I said, but then you got to talk to my man, D. So he means D-Dot, and D-Dot can tell you the rest from that point on. I said, fuck that, man, fuck that, (laughs) dog. I ain't trying to put on no bow ties and all that type, EB buys and all that type of shit. (laughs) Well, you know, but but, no, but tell them why you mad, son, boys. (laughs) (laughs) No, but 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 to that point, when you when you when you when you do the knowledge on Two Kings and the Cypher, like Ron had the Fez. You know, he had the dashiki, he was real, you know, he had the cultural thing. But then D Dot got the polo, he looked real Brooklyn, Brooklyn always funky fresh. And that was really like, you know, you see that the different aspects of black manhood at that time together. Like it wasn't separate, you know what I mean? So I think I, I wanna applaud you guys for that, for being able to put those two, you know, images together in one package. So you know, brings unity and togetherness from really what seems to be two separate worlds shows the, the unification. So big shout out to y'all for doing that. Appreciate that. So, and that, that was almost purposely because by accident, purposely, but I, by accident too, because I just, you know, I just didn't want to wear what Ron was wearing as well. That Ron was really representing that. Ron didn't drink. He didn't smoke. Ron eats healthy. He I was, was exercising. Huh? I, I was the clean cut good guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I was smoking weed, drinking, yeah. getting kicked out of school, from the know, block. Doing, doing the but dumb he, shit. Yeah. So what he did what he did. I had already experienced years before. I was kicked out of high. I was kicked out of in tenth grade, kicked out of art and design for cutting school and smoking weed. So I had did all that. You know what I'm saying? That right. was experience. So when I came to college, that's he was on the sh- behind me. Yeah, so yeah, he, he was, was on the street. Sh- I experienced a couple of years before that. Yeah, yeah. yeah he Ron was, Ron was wearing button ups and all types of shit. Ron was wearing <laughs> button ups and, and you know I was like, oh shit, like you know what I mean. So he was he got there about his business. So Hawk, you know, and Hawk and in his relationships, Hawk, Hawk had relationships in the music business. You know, he's from Queens, mm-hmm. so he was grew up in hip hop and he had relationships. So somewhere along the line, I really couldn't tell you because back then, me and Ron were really playing artists back then. Like we were mm. really just artists. You know, and hip hop and hip hop is still in its infancy, so to speak, or it's going to its teenage years. Like we're mm-hmm. we're still in it when it hasn't even become a teenager technically yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so we were, very, we were very dedicated too because, like, you know, I was working a nine to five job at the same time. We both was. Yeah, we both was. Yeah. So I, we would leave. I would take a leave of absence like three days out of the week, and we would travel to Philly. 
just to sleep on Hawk's floor so we can record in Philadelphia International Studios with Kenny Gamble. Shout out to Mr. Gamble, Mr. Huff. That's, that's huge. Yeah. Yo, yeah. Yo, yo, talk, yo, talk about Gamble and Huff and how important they are to music business so folks understand you you recording with Ga at Gamble and Huff's studio, Philadelphia International is like legendary. Well, we, we got there because once again, Hawk found, you know, when I said we was playing artists, Hawk went this thing, got us the record deal. Mm. We got a deal with Bahia RCA. Mr. Gregory Peck gave us our deal. Shout out to Mr. Greg Peck. Um, so we got our deal. Now we got a budget. So DC, at the time that we're there, it's not a hip hop town. It's still heavy go-go. Go, go. Go, go. Okay. You know, and, and it's not, go, go. you know, we don't really have a lot of allies except new people mm -hmm. around us. Yes. So Hawk suggested that we record in Philly because at that time he was working with Mr. Gamble at Philadelphia International and Mr. Huff. So, of course, me and Ron growing up on their music, that's a dream come true for us. Mm -hmm. So Tone Executioner, me and Ron would jump in the car and go to Philly. And Mr. Gamble opened up his doors to him. So once again, we're thankful to Mr. Gamble, Mr. Huff and Hawk. And then so there we got to meet of our constituents that were actually working, Philadelphia rappers. We got to meet, uh, you know, people like Will Smith and Charlie Mack and, 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 and um, you know, people from here. Uh, we met, you know, Jazzy Jeff and, and um, uh, uh, EST and different people like that. Mm -hmm. We're getting to start the, in the game. And then as well, little things like little shows are starting to come up. So now Ron and I, as we're recording and we got moving on them out, you know, we're doing little shows. But to go and sit with Mr. Gamble and Mr. Huff was like a dream come true. <clears throat> Not only did, you know, they sit with us and give us jewels, but they allowed me and Ron to go into their vault. Yeah, we we, we were going to the, yeah we were going to the vaults and um we it, what it, the twenty four track it, reels yeah we destroyed one of the reels by the way if you can remember oh it. I feel kind of bad about it so. y'all wild it <laughs> yeah yeah you gonna make me love somebody else we put we took the twenty four track reels well no no actually we didn't we didn't destroy it we didn't destroy it George, what happened that, was that joint got eaten the, 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 yeah but but not the but not the whole reel what happened was we. The engineer, his name was um Jim Gallagher. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Jim Gallagher. I remember him specifically. He taught me and Ron how to splice tape. So he ended up make he he got a, he made a copy of the tape after the end of it got messed up. But because they had a copy on the other reels, he spliced it together and then let me and Ron take the instrumental and then he spliced it together for Ron to do his thing. Because at that time, Ron was the lead producer so him and ron sat in there taking literal tapes of something from the 70s and yeah. the 90s well, 80s yeah, well, and put yeah. them together yo right. i know you know when you say splice and you're kind of explaining it i don't i want the people to understand the yeah, tedious, pro <laughs> the tedious <laughs> process of cutting and splicing and editing and how you know you it's, it's a tedious process it's, it's actual a two-inch yeah. tape is like this it's a big reel, and you gotta listen in, and then by sight, cut the tape. Oh, go ahead, Ron. You, you explain that. <laughs> it's your yeah, interview. You won't explain it. My bad. Quarter inch. Quarter inch. I'm sorry. Yeah, we must have had to box the two inch to quarter inch in order to do that. And then right, you know, right. Edit, edit quarter, block right. Yeah. With a razor, and you take the, the, the pieces that you need, and then you splice them together with tape at the bottom of it. Just like how, you, like back in the days, how we would take cassettes, mm -hmm. and if the cassette would pop, we would take the tape and we'll put like. We we'll put both the tapes together and put like the adhesive tape at the bottom of it, mm -hmm. of it to make it stick. It's, it's, it's similar. It's pretty much the same thing, but it's different like, type of tape, though. Different type different of tape. Kind of tape. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Different type of tape. Yeah. yeah. Tape was thicker. You just mm -hmm. kind of put it laid off. So Mr. 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 Gamble and Mr. Huff would come in and drop little jewels on recording styles, or you know, Mr. Gamble mm -hmm. obviously is a songwriter, so he may have come in every now and then and tell us what he like or say, hey, why don't you try, you know, try doing this, try doing that. So it was just a straight privilege just being there yeah. under their tutelage. And I, you know, I got to chill with Mr. Huff on a personal level because Pop tracks as his son. So mm -hmm. Poppy, you know, when we were coming up, Poppy was growing up. Now Pop is a well-known producer here in Philadelphia. He's produced for a lot of people. So I got to chill with Mr. Huff on personal levels and other places. So it was cool. It was real cool. You know, they, they traveled privilege. to some of the events. Like uh, how could now how could I be down? What was the name? Jack, Jack the Rapper. The rapper. Mm -hmm. Jack the Rapper. Too. Yeah, I, I remember me and Pop, Pop and um, and Huff and how can I be down? Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, just, just again for the audience sake, because th that name comes up a bunch of times on our show. Jack the rapper. Yeah. Explain, explain Jack the rapper and what that was all about, so few folks can understand the magnitude of that. Well, Jack, well, the, Jack rapper. the rapper was the modern day Coachella, or the modern day, uh, what's the thing Jay Z does? Uh, you know, yeah. or the Roots Picnic, or yeah, uh, um, Made in America, Made in, Made in America, yeah. yeah. That that was you know, the 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 early '90s experience of a glorified Fresh Fest from the '80s, right. you know where. Not only did we get to see a show, but now you got to commune. You get yeah. to talk and chop it up in this panels. And it, it was like, I mean, if you if you've been to How Can I Be Down, mm -hmm. it was similar to that to me. But I think How Can I Be Down was more geared towards hip hop when um, Jack the Rapper was just it was everything it was black music and it was just black music. So and, yeah. and, and black like black it's like Jack the Rapper yeah. was about black people. Right. Right. You right. Know. Right. Yeah. So we oh, got to meet a lot of artists down there. You know, some people that, you know, back then, <clears throat> you know, the Southern artists, the West Coast artists, the East Coast artists, there wasn't a lot of times that we got to mix with each other because West Coast wasn't popular on West Co on the East and the Southern wasn't popular in the East and the East wasn't popular in the South. And so you, when you go to Atlanta, now we're meeting all these guys that are on the charts. We meet UGK, we meet a -Boy MJG, we meet in... You know all these West Coast artists, Ice, Ice Cube, Cube, and yeah. it was like a crazy experience because you know, and videos were very rare. We 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 didn't have the crazy outlets now, so you you really was an artist, but a groupie all at the same time because it was <laughs> like you did not get to see these dudes, and we liked their music, and some of them like ours. You know, yeah, like right. one of me and Nas's Nas, the the uh, Nasia Jones, one of our mm -hmm. stories together is on Howard University's campus during one of the events that Hawk actually threw, um, the, the hip hop conferences in DC, which was <clears throat> 91, 92, yeah, 93, I remember those. around this time. Mm -hmm. um, Pac walks on campus and says, yo, is that Nas? And me and Nas are standing with each other. So he gives Nas a, a pound. And then he looks at me, he doesn't know my name, but mm. he looks at me and instantly goes, for the brothers, the brothers away. Uh -huh, he uh -huh. starts singing our song. He knows who we are, so he introduces ourselves. So these moments, these conferences were real important because before wow. the cell phones and before all this internet stuff, this was the only way we got to commune aside from doing shows together. Yeah. And chop it up and do wow. stuff like that. So Jack the Rapper was very important to the culture at that time. You know, you don't realize it now. Mm -hmm. I mean, you I mean, you really didn't, but now, right, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. But now it's like, damn, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have internet. Me and apologize. Me That's and Ron, good. me and Ron had to um, you know, we had to drive ourselves on our tour. So we actually had a map mm. to get down south. We had to drive a not, passenger not, van. Not not Google map. No, not oh, Google got, map. No, a map. An actual map. Yeah, <laughs> me, Ron, from the our gas security station. guard. Go ahead, Ron. Yeah, we had the actual maps from the gas stations. Right, 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 with the gas stations, right? right. <laughs> with the gas stations, right. You go to the gas station, they got like a, a whole catalog of different maps and state, yeah, different states. No we didn't have no tour bus. We had a one of them Ford vans and shit. We had a passenger van that passenger. we had to take the seats out of to go yeah. on tour to put our mm. luggage and we could sleep. So we didn't even have a luxury van. We had a passenger van that sits those three rows of seats and we took two seats out and left them in our house. By the time we went on the road, me and Ron, and our DJ and our man Kenny all lived in the same house. So we left the seats in the house. Wow, that's with crazy. Kenny until that's we crazy. got back. It's crazy. We toured the whole country in that van. Yeah, we toured the, and drove ourselves. We toured the whole wow. country, but we had to drive. We had no driving or nothing. We had to right. drive ourselves. Now, 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 when we say, you know, when we talk about the time when the culture was pure, this is the time we're talking about. It's these types of experiences and, to and stories where you could just, even though it's 30 years removed, you could still, for me, I could feel what you're saying. I, now I've lived that life. I've seen that. I could, the whole idea of renting a car, a minivan, and taking the seats out and leaving them in the house so you could pile in and go wherever you're going to go to. Yeah, but it was different. It was different for us because we didn't come from a, we didn't come from a company that had a lot of money. Like, we, mm. we were like really on a budget. Mm -hmm. We were dealing with situations where we would walk into stores and and we just, and it would just be like one CD in there, mm -hmm. one CD, mm. like the, right. and it was because the record company wasn't putting a lot of money behind this. 
So you'd have like 20 people outside waiting to sign an autograph and we could only sign one CD. So wow. one CD and that was right. it. No, you, uh, it was almost the, like we were set up to fail in a sense. But <laughs> so for the for, for the folks to understand, because right now there are no more like record stores, right? But it costs money to put the record on the shelf. Yeah. So you know, we say there's only one CD on the shelf, is because the record label has a a budget, a, you know, a, re- a distribution budget, a retail budget, and if you know, if you're not really in demand, they're gonna. You know, uh, but, well, but but also taking into consideration, this might have been Little Rock, Arkansas too. Yeah, this yeah. might have been Nashville, Tennessee. Right, right. Where they didn't know what the hell two kings. What the hell is this two kings and a cipher? What is what is this crap? So there's no reason to put ten thousand CDs down in Little Rock yet. Right. So you got to right. take that in consideration too. But yes, there were times we went to places. I remember me and Ron went to New Orleans. We went to some backwoods place. It was an AM station. Remember back then too. Every FM station didn't even play hip hop. Good rap, yeah. No we went to an AM station and we had to walk over a swamp to get there. Ooh. Gosh, yeah, gosh. yeah, but you would think if they knew that we were coming, you would think they would stack, stack right. it up. Right, mm-hmm. right. But it didn't happen like that in those days. So we had to suck it up and shit like that. But yeah, but you, that, that's, that's, that's what was going on. That's a, what aside, was going on. aside from building Two Kings and a Cypher and the success of you two, you, those types of like experiences, you're helping to build the culture because you're going to places where they, they, they've never experienced hip hop like that. So you go walk across a swamp to get to a record store to not only promote yourself, but you're carrying the culture on your back as well. And you know, it, it's important for folks to understand that like nothing's given even today, what we have today was built on nothing. And we had right. to create something out of nothing. Right. So applause, applause to you guys for that, for, to, to, for having the heart and the desire to go, nah, we're we going to make this shit happen by hook or crook. We're going to do it. Focus, you're talking too much over there, man. For real, man. You hey, got to shut up. Yeah, there, I'm going to shut Yeah, I'm going to meet you. Nah, nah, you know, I like to listen, man. I like to <laughs> notes, man. You know, you guys out here, legendary, yeah. dropping all kind of yeah. tools. So I'm soaking them all up. But I, I do have a question, though. So did you guys ever do, like, an official college tour? Yes. Okay. Yes, so we did. We did. That in comparison to the traditional tours, going to clubs, I mean, what what did you enjoy more? Between I mean, the clubs and the, what was that? The yeah, colleges? Like, you know, a college tour versus the traditional going to a town a club. and playing at a club. Where it's, I mean, I know sometimes the college shows are mixed a little but, bit. But see, the way we did it, it was, it was mixed. We did both of them together at the same time. Sometimes yeah. we would hit colleges. Sometimes we would hit like you know, uh, clubs. Yeah, it depend, depend on what we had on the roster, what we had on the itinerary. Mm-hmm. So that one particular state, we probably hit a club, and earlier that day we we would hit a college. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and now I say the colleges because the colleges number one. You know, a lot of people didn't notice, but I learned this shit that the colleges they be paying. You know what I'm saying? So you could be a quote unquote no name. As long as you in with one of these uh, groups and over there, you know what I'm saying, align yourself properly, and you get yourself a little show, get a little five hundred, little thousand dollars, you know. So it's just. Yeah, I don't think we even do we even get paid on tour, D? When we did I mean, that, this particular, was, this was particular tour like, was no, nah, we didn't get paid at all because it was, it was, it was promotion. a promotional tour. Yeah, it was a promotional tour. Yeah, so we promo didn't get no money from that. We didn't see we no didn't money. paper. But you know, in the moving on, you know, later on, we get paid for shows. We doing things, but so. When you first, you know, for, for people that know back then was, you know, you have to almost hit the road prior to the record exploding. You know what I'm saying? Like, because there was no, the, the traditional way we have now, it wasn't that way back then. So our promo tour, we had to do it in order for people to just know the record. So there was like, no- There was no radio play. It was so right. It was, we had to go to university of this or, these HS, I mean, these HBCUs down in, you know, we went to Florida a and We went to all of those, but a lot of it was, one, it was HBCUs, but also it was because the South didn't have our record. Mm. So we had to make ourselves known in the South. Of course, in New York, we playing next to Leaders of the New School, Brand Nubian, our Tribe Called Quest. Our rec- we did shows with them because it's, it's New York, it's the East. Right. Mm-hmm. But try going to Alabama like we did it was crickets. Crickets. <laughs> crickets. 
<laughs> like, yeah. yeah, is, is yeah. that a discouraging feeling though? Did that did that discourage you at all? Like when you show up and there's like nobody there, nobody's trying to hear from you. Did that like you know what? Let's not come back here. Or, 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 or yeah. was that like the battery in your back? We gonna make them know what it is. Man, I remember one show me and Ron did. We did a show at a club somewhere down south. There was four fat ladies in there and two dudes, and we performed in a club that held about five hundred people for four <laughs> big, beautiful black women. Yeah. <laughs> It was that was our bars. whole audience, and they it were older than bars. us. They were older than us. They weren't kids. They were they were like in their late, early thirties, late thirties. Wow, you know, that was what we performed for. <laughs> See, I think our toughest crowd was Miami. We Miami did a might show. have been. Yeah, we did a show outside of Miami. That was pretty. Yeah, you talk about yeah, in the, this time like period in Miami, like you know, like DC is go go, Miami is bass. So if it ain't like heavy bass, speed up track. Like they're not really trying to feel no. Yeah, but also not move back consciousness. Nah, it wasn't nah. that, but also the strip that you know now is Miami. That wasn't even in existence. Wow. That fly thing you see that man that looked like nobody was going there when we was going to Miami back in the early nineties. It wasn't until Nori's man, what's his name? Um, FN DJ EFN DJ EFN and them guys. Start doing pirate radio. When me and Ron went to Miami, mm -hmm. we was on pirate radio in Miami. On, on the bus, right? On the yellow bus? That I don't even know it was the yellow bus. But in the 80s, I think it was near the water somewhere or something like that. Wow. It was pirate radio. There wasn't no hip hop. It was pirate radio. So that and we ocean, say pirate. That whole ocean, I'm uh, sorry. That whole ocean ad was. It was disgusting. <laughs> Nobody was on that. That wasn't even there. Wow. Mm. That didn't happen till. That didn't happen till. You know, I don't know when that happened, but it wasn't during the two kings in the cipher days. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, now, now we, we say making something out of nothing. These are the stories people need to hear so they understand what it was like for our generation coming up. Yeah, it is the culture, but then there's the business of it. In the business of it, we had to kind of create the, the market. And you guys right. are creating the market. You guys are going places where there is no hip hop, no rap really, and you creating it. And uh, that's, 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 that's a, uh, focus, you, you got any other questions got you want? Question. So, yeah, so there the you album, go. So the album, uh, Ron, did you produce the entire album or did you guys both produce the album or did you have outside production as well? Nah, there was no outside production. It was just okay. in house. Now at that time, what was your weapon of choice? What were you guys using? MPC 60, mm. it was MPC 60 and the ASR 10. Mm. Ron, Ron, Ron produced the whole Two Kings in a Cypher album. That was his job back then. He was, you know, I didn't even know how to use a drum machine back then. So that Ron mm. did, Ron produced the whole album, you know. Um, and for me, that was, it was school for me because I had a lot of ideas, but, you know, to make it come to life using your hands is a whole different, it's a whole yeah. different animal. Yeah. yeah. Yo, focus, you need to turn your volume up a little bit, bro. Yeah, Actually, well, a lot. Yeah, turn your volume up, focus. I'm okay, sorry. On, I'm sorry, guys. Me and Dad, we had a we had a very good chemistry, you know. So we would always, no matter what we did, we always bounced off each other, mm. regardless if I was on if, if I was pushing the knobs or whatever, you know, his ideas, whatever it was, it came together and it was it was a complete, you know, a complete mesh. Mm. Everything we did was we split everything. Collaborative. 50. Collaborative. Yeah, well, collaborative. collaborative. Yeah, collaborative. Well, that was. That was school for D Dot, but what was school for you, Ron? How'd you learn? How did you pick up the bug of production and getting yeah, well, involved? I, to me, that, that, that was kind of an error, really, because I didn't like D would tell you we never read manuals. We just kind of just we just the box up and started playing with the box. Like yeah. So I would say my study came probably from just watching Herbie Lovebug and saying that you know I could do that. Wow, Herbie Lovebug. Be successful, yeah. Because he was the first one that I, that I saw with a drum machine, really. What was he using? Um, he used he had the Roland, Roland drum machine. He had the SP12. Um, he had Doctor Rhythm. I think that he had that one first. Mm -hmm. But then he had the small sampler, the small sampler that he got from that he saw Marley Mall using. Uh, I think it was called the Instant Replay, and it mm -hmm. sampled like maybe a half a second. And Marley had that drum. Marley had used their sampler to do the um the Marley scratch. It sampled, mm. I think maybe it sampled like a second, but you have to speed up the record. That's like the um SK one. 
the little small little SK one cast yeah, joint yeah. that you. So that is their replay was what Herbie used to do the Showstopper, and I watched him, you know, going from that to the Rolling Eight Hundred Eight mm-hmm. and then the mm-hmm. SK twelve. You you said you him you wa- you watched him and yeah. saw him, yeah, yeah. Showstopper. Right. You know you 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 saw Kid and Play get developed. You saw salt and pepper, how that came together. You were there for it. Right. You, exp- you folks need to understand like your roots and your history. That's you know, what he came to Howard with. Yeah, That's what yeah, he came that, that was my education. Right. Pretty Come much. Yeah. I, I, I brought that along to school with me. You know, right. so that wow. was a in me that was embedded in, in my mind. And I knew I wanted mm. to pursue the dream of hip hop. I always wanted to pursue hip hop. So coming to school, that was the way out. But my dream was to be successful either as a rapper or a producer later on in life. Yeah. Mm. But coming into it, I really, I, my desire wasn't really to be a producer. I just wanted to be a successful MC. Mm-hmm. So that was going to be one of my next questions was, when you look back at it now, like, what do you guys enjoy more? Like, take the money out of it. What did you enjoy more? MCing, production, or, I mean, I guess both. But which one would you, you know, would, did you enjoy more, honestly? Take the money out yeah, of this. I mean, I'll be honest with you, for me, when I got a taste of being a rapper from Two Kings and a Cypher, once I got a taste of that, like, that was it for me. I was like, you know what? I think the production thing would be better suit for myself. And I could relive the dream that I wanted to as a kid in another rapper like Notorious B.I.G. Okay, but why, mm. why, why, what made you say that? I mean, just dealing with the hardship with Two Kings and a Cypher, the experience that I had on the road. But from an artist. Being a rapper right. and just knowing what you know, artists have to deal with. I mean, sometimes I didn't want to have to sign autographs. But it's like when you go on the road and when you don't feel like wanting to sign autographs and, and, and not being bothered, you have to kind of put on this, this facade like you're somebody else. And so people can like you, even though you don't even want to be there. You have to be somebody else mm-hmm. and you have to show the public that you are this person that's loved because you don't want the next person to come back and say, oh, this, this dude, he, you know, he had a bad attitude, you know? Mm-hmm. And then sometimes I couldn't differentiate the two when, when I was put in that position. D did, did it better than I did. But sometimes I, you know, I felt like I didn't want to be in a situation where I had to sign an autograph sometimes. or I didn't mm-hmm. want to, you know. Put the face on. Be on a road for a long time. That that just wasn't me. I didn't I didn't enjoy that. Okay. Right. And, How about I, you, I, Dot? Myself, man. I, when, when, first of all, when did you get into the production? Um, I got into production by force. Um, Same here. <laughs> uh, because um, uh, once Two Kings in the Cypher, we disbanded in 1992 or 93, whatever year that was. Um, I stayed in D.C. for a little while. Ron was still in D.C. But then I decided I got to pick up and go back to New York because D.C. wasn't it for me. You know, uh, that same year or maybe a year later, Ron picks up and goes to L.A. So now we're separated by 3,000 miles. Wow. And um, Ron has always been advanced technologically, meaning he always had the new gadgets. So by the time he got out there, he got drum new new things and new toys he's playing with. So Ron was the first person sending me dats of beats. Mm. You know dat. What I'm dat. What's a dat? dat? What's a dat? That is a, a, audio tape, yeah. is an audio tape, Digital but that's audio, what we used yeah. to have to send music on. It was bigger than the cassette. It hold more time than the cassette. And you could, you know, and you, so that's how we started transferring stuff. It was better quality, quality yeah. right. better quality. So, um, but once again, I'm not there with Ron. And Ron just told you from a collaborative standpoint, a lot of times it was better when I was there. So what would happen is Ron was sending that, y'all. It's a debt, y'all. So oh, there you go. Here we go. Yeah, that's a that. Yes. There you go. Perfect. So um, Ron would send beats sometimes and I'd have comments about them because I'm a rapper. So I, mm-hmm. I'd want him to move a certain way. or I'd want this and that. But mm-hmm. if he's sending 45 or 50 of them or 20 of them at a time, he can't adjust every single thing that I want. So I said to myself, in order for sometimes for me to give him the idea of what I want, I'll just do it myself. Mm. Because I wanted to move a certain way for the rap part of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then it was sometimes where I'd have to do nothing. I would just spit over it and, and do stuff like that. But 
I wanted to still be an MC. So to answer your question, to me, being an MC was, I always loved being an MC better because it was, it was more creative to me because once I finished writing, now you get to go show the world what it is. The drawback from being a producer is that we don't get to enjoy the, the fruits the same way the artists do. Well, I don't know about that. He said take out, he said, take out the money. All this hard work. He said, I did take, take, he said, take out the money. He I said take out the money. Right, right, so, that's right, that's so, right. If I don't tell people I did the Benjamins, those guys get to perform that for the next 40 years. <laughs> yeah. Each right. one of them separately. Right. Puff could do it by himself. Kim could go do it by himself. All these artists get to enjoy the beauty of our records, and we just disappear to obscurity. So that's the drawback to being a producer. So now I see why right. the Teddy Riley's, the Puffs, the Pharrell's, and the Timberlands, they made themselves a part of the records. Mm -hmm. That was really the only way for your legacy to continue without credits. Correct. Mm -hmm. Because now there's no reading anymore. Mm -hmm. There's no physical credits for you to read. So if somebody don't get on the track and say, tita, 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 <laughs> you wouldn't know I did it. Right. right. Okay. So what was your weapon of choice when you started production? I saved up enough money because at the time, after me and Ron disbanded, I worked and then I became a tour manager for Mary J. Blige for two years. Woo! I, the first thing I bought was... Oh, 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 wait a minute. The first thing I bought was... Uh, too fast. Let's rewind a little bit. You're, you're moving on him right now. You're moving on him. So you were well, I was just telling you at that moment, that's how I was... I bought an MPC-62. And so I called Ron and said, I got an MPC-62. He had already graduated to the ASR and something uh -huh. else. And, you know, Ron is gadget guy. So he had all his old discs just sitting around doing nothing. So I said, yo, send me all them old drum sounds and all that other stuff. You know what I'm saying? So like, for example, the Benjamins has Ron Lawrence's drum sounds in them, some of them. <laughs> so that's all I had. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because back then, in order for Ron to build up his beat catalog, he had to sit there on records and take a snare himself, sample it, edit it, and put it to the side. There was no catalog he could go buy with a thousand snares, a thousand kicks, and a thousand snares. So this this guy got so this this guy got had his time of sitting up there each hi hat edited a certain way. Truncate, do this, that. <laughs> so I got I got 60 of those to choose from. Okay, I'm gonna make all my beats with these 60. Fuck it. I ain't got time to do what Ron is doing. So my first 40 beats had all of them sounds in them until I realized, oh, okay, I know I can manipulate this one. If I combine these two snares, I can make a new sound. If right. I combine this kick with that sound, I can make a whole new feel or vibe to it. I, right. can, I can tune this 808, I can do this. So that's where my lessons came from doing my own, oh shit, this is what this, this, what this button does? Get the fuck out of here. Oh, wow. I can turn the timing correct off so my shit is not always Right. If I want my shit inside that little pocket, I can turn that off now. Wow. So that was my lesson. You know what I'm saying? So your your first beat, your first beat, <laughs> Ron, when you heard his first beat, what oh, were you, wow. did you like? Oh, this is fire, or you was like, eh? What did you think? Do you do you remember? Ron? A long time. <laughs> okay. It was a long time. It's like okay. you know, they, to me. Dot always he, he he always had great ideas, you know. He, I mean, he always came to me with, me with fire. So whatever he gave me, if I finished it, you know, um, it all it always came out to be something hot. Okay. So he always had he always had good ideas, and okay. that was my like first, my first couple good. of beats. Quality wise, see, Ron's ear is super China. It's like China in the in the cabinet. Mm. Like it's super clean. It's organized. It's it's color coded. My sound was nasty. It was clips coming off the sample. Brooklyn, baby. You can hear the, <laughs> you can hear the kicks clashing yeah. with each other. Pretty much, yeah. But I would clean this stuff up. Yeah, he much. would clean it up for he me. Bring, he would bring it to me, and I would tighten it up. Yeah, because you yeah. can hear where I was going, but I wasn't patient enough to move it and edge it to the left, edge it to the right. Nigga, you get it. You get you get where right. I'm going. <laughs> right, right. You get where I'm going. That's yeah. how we. And that's how we bonded. That's how we bonded as a team. Yeah. So, 
Yo, man, this, yo, this conversation right here, y'all, I'm such a hip hop fan right now. And just to hear you detail these experiences about how you grew as artists and producers is like, yeah, I'm almost in tears, bro. You know, <laughs> phenomenal. The, the funny thing was D would always, he would always be, be behind my shoulder when I would make beats. He would always just sit behind me and just look to see what I was doing. He would just <laughs> look at the buttons and whatnot. And then when I go get something to eat and go chill somewhere, he'd be sitting on a drum machine and he would be experimenting. Then I would just mm. leave him alone, let him do his thing. You know? Yeah. Because yeah. I, I, I want, because I, I want to write a rap to it. And, mm. and, and, you know, me and Ron, as you can tell, our personalities are different. I'm on 10, mad or happy. <laughs> Don't I know I'm it. I'm just on 10. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He would never see me mad. And if he ever saw me mad, he'd be like, yo, right. where did that come from? Right. Wow. I'm on 10 all the time. Mm -hmm. Ron would, you know, his he's even kill. Like it's mm -hmm. just an even kill thing. Mm -hmm. So I would go and literally fuck something up he was started. Like he mm -hmm. might have started it, but I heard it a certain way. And if I got in his ear too much, he, you know, he don't, that's not his thing. Like you can't, like, yeah. you know, I, I'm you on 10, dot. You gotta tone it down in order for me to even. <laughs> listen to you. So most of the time it wasn't resonating because I'm on 10. So when he would get up and leave, I'd say, well, let me fix this shit here. I turn this shit off by accident or truncate too much and erase it and he can't get it back. So now he got to resample the sample. Wow. You know, I do dumb shit like that, but that's how I learned. Right. It's part I of the growing experience. Magazine, and I wasn't patient enough to sit there and he, when he's creative, he ain't got time to be schooling me on what that red button means. Mm. Right. You know, like he, he can't say this, so this is what you do with this because he's in creative mode. Mm -hmm. So I would just watch and let him get his shit off mm -hmm. and then ask later, what, what did you do with that button right there? Because I noticed when you hit it, it did this, did that. And he, then he was explaining mm. to me because he's done now. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know what I mean? So that's how we work this shit. So that, you yes, know what I mean? What, what were your guys, do you remember what were your first placements? Like when you finally like, oh shit, I got paid for this joint right here. Well, he, he got paid for something he did for salt and pepper back in the day. That was my first real placement. That's how I was able to get by the equipment. I mean, I'm, now, I'm sorry. And that was I mean, 1987, after, after you guys parted yeah, ways, I mean, after you guys parted yeah. ways. And you uh, were a full-time producer. And in the nine in the nineties, our first placements were we got three placements simultaneously, one of which came out, two of which didn't. Um Rock thank him. you. To, to Kedar Massenberg. Ah, Kedar Massenberg gave me and Ron legend. our very first checks. And he paid us for two songs for um, Rakim. Mm. 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 So, um, so when they told you, like, yo, I'm taking these three right here, I mean, what was your, did y'all guys feel like, shit, man, we, we made it, we did it? Like, well, what was that feeling like? Yeah, it was a mate. We made it. We felt it, but we was broke as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that that little checky check was paid off debt, huh? That's right. just well, back in the, I'm, I'm gonna back keep in the hole. When I say broke, meaning by this time Ron is in L.A. I'm in New York, but I'm I'm tour manager Mary J. Blige, so I'm not. You know, I'm, I'm a little exaggerating a little bit. I wasn't as broke as I'm saying I am, but relatively this, speaking, this is something we work towards. Mm -hmm. So Keaton Massenberg gives us our first check. We go record the Rakim song. Simultaneously, um, we get a a relationship with Jimmy, and Jimmy gets a placement for us for Sugar a, a Sweet Tea, who changed her name to Sugar. That's Jimmy. Jimmy Henchman. Jimmy Henchman. Okay. Jimmy Henchman. So he gets us a placement on the show soundtrack mm -hmm. for Sweet Tea, aka Sugar for a song mm -hmm. that we produced called What's Up Star. Mm -hmm. So that was our first taste of the business to get to get off. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then from there on, at this time in our careers, we both decided that the group thing is not for us. So quietly, I'm pursuing a solo career. But I'm mm -hmm. gun shot um, because of those same things Ron said. Yeah. When you got a partner, it's not as much pressure. Don't I know it? Yeah. But when you got to do it all yourself, the pressure is a lot different. Mm -hmm. And I don't think mentally I was prepared to compete with LL, Method Man, Biggie, Fat Joe, Nas. Even though I know I could, you had to have something in you to do it. 
And mm-hmm. I, at that moment, I didn't. But I knew I wanted to be in the game in a way that would get me back to that point of confidence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> that point for me was I'm learning beats, but that point was selling those beats. Because I'm walking in meetings now, and I'm getting meetings with executives. So I'm a little bit above the rappers at this point in my mind. Yeah, you are. Mm-hmm. And, and, that, and that fucked my head up. Like, oh, shit. I just came from a meeting with Kedar. Yeah. So like, oh, we, shit. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting in a meeting with this dude over here or this dude over here. I'm not. They not looking at me as a rapper at this particular stage right here. I'm Mary J. Blige's tour manager, and I, and I got some beats to play, y'all. And that's amazing that you were Mary J. Blige's tour manager. Right. Like, that's amazing and, to me. And that, and that, and that, so now I, I started realizing, you know what? Maybe the rapper thing, I shouldn't go as hard as it because I might have a potential to make more money or just as much money or more money this way, executive mm-hmm. producing wise. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, and I think once I got into to that, to that comfort zone, it was much more easier for me to maneuver in the game. Mm-hmm. Because I'm walking in spaces super confident. So when I walked in that studio and I and I reached out my hand and introduced myself to Big, he said to me, oh, I know who you are. I used to watch you and Ron on, on music on video music box. But now my confidence is like Phew. <laughs> Yeah. I'm an OG yeah. now. Yeah. My man is Mary J. Blige. I work with Bad Boy. Me and Ron are historic. So my confidence level now is at a different game. Because yeah. I felt like if I was just doing this, this is all they would have to judge me on. And if it wasn't hot, I'd be I'd be driving a bus or back mm-hmm. collecting tools when I got kicked out of school. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, you guys were, you know, you talked about wanting to be in the game and then being in the game. And then you get to a point where the two of you together and separately change the game. How was that feeling and experience to be in a position where you see everybody else start to mimic your style and mimic what you're doing and checking for you before the project come out. Well, you know, so-and-so was a part of that. You, you know, you know, so-and-so produced that. And it's like, it's a whole different thing than wanting to be in the game, being in a position where you're actually literally changing the game. I mean, it, it, it was healthy competition between the both of us. I mean, partners and, you know, just, Having to be able to have our second minutes, 15 minutes of fame, I mean, that was like a blessing, man, for us because because of what we had gone through as rappers. And mind you, we, you know, our record deal, we had, um, the label got dropped. That's how we got dropped. The label got dropped. And, and that's Bahia RCA. Right. The Bahia was so just dropped, RCA. Dropped, we lost the deal. Mm-hmm. And then we had to figure out what our next move was going to be. And that's why I went to L.A. And that's mm-hmm. why D started road managing Mary J. Blige, you know. And then we did the East Coast, West Coast thing where I would send him beats and then he would shot whatever we were doing. And for us to be able to get that second 15 minutes of fame to be able to reinvent ourselves, man, that was that was a great that was a great moment for us to be able to 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 do that because um it kept the two kings in the sight for legacy alive. Mm-hmm. People like if that probably wouldn't have happened, two kings in the cipher may have been dead and stinking in the water. But because mm-hmm. people saw us as these producers who became successful, you know, mm-hmm. within that bad boy era, they could say, "Yo, those are the guys that came from two kings in the cipher. Those are the dudes." Like you know, so they were able to associate the two, and then they saw that we were producing records for Biggie and producing records for LL and producing, you know, um, all these, 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 these big rappers. But the cool thing about it was between D and I, being that we were a team, we were also separate also. So it was healthy competition between the two of us. And the thing about it was, it was like, how many records you got on this album? Well, I got, I got four records. Well, I got five. Well, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't really about like, you know, who well, had we might have two together. Who had the most joint? Together. You know what I'm saying? We might have two that we did together. Yeah. One he did, I did, and one he, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Still sharp and steel. Right. Yeah, incredible, man. That's incredible. Right. Yeah. Wow. So, I'm and just, then, again, soaking so, up the jewels, so, man. Two Kings and a Cypher ended up being, you know, bigger 
than that moment for mm -hmm. us. So the moment didn't define two kings in a cipher. The two players did. And that was the difference between us and a lot of people that came from our time. Yeah. Is that that moment defined them and they didn't find a way to redefine themselves mm -hmm. as individuals. And I just recently told Ron the other day, you know, um that we caught a little backlash from our bad from our bad boy days because it looked like we quote unquote uh crossed over. It mm. looked like we sold out. But that was the semi ignorance we were dealing with and the times we were dealing with in hip hop that it was mm. so you had to stick to your gun so much that you would go down with the ship with yourself as opposed to realizing that Ron and I, we can get this message out in a different way. Mm -hmm. They want Ron to keep that fez on forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like he just told me that the other day. It was like, once he took it off, how could you? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Well, because, you know, especially what y'all represent as two kings in a cipher, you know, like that era was that quick, right? So if, if that era, not just the group, but that era, if it impacted you, like you put all your hopes, dreams, and desires on the backs of the two kings and the ciphers, the KRS ones, like you guys were the standard bearer for for our whole thinking, way of thinking. So when that changed, it's like, damn, like, damn, like who's gonna represent us? Who's gonna hold our banner? Who's gonna hold our cause? And that's just can, the can you imagine if they would have kept can you imagine if they'd have kept Dr. Dre and the Wrecking Crew or whatever the name of that? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, World class. Was, was sequence and, and eyeliner? Yeah, it would have yeah, been. Can you imagine <laughs> that Dr. Dre not being allowed to go become the guy we know now? Yeah. You know, but you know, in in the moment in time, you know, 17, 18, 19 years old, again, you don't you can't see the future. Right, right. And that's why these conversations are so important because we're able to hopefully relate to up and coming folks, people who are trying to do it. And they can say, you know what? I need to learn how to adapt because looking at two kings in a cipher and their ability to adapt and they did it, then I can do it too. Right. But what we did do, we tried at the beginning. What we did do was when we went into production, even though I took off the Fez and even though we assimilated ourselves into the whole bad boy system and started producing those kind of records, you know, I kept the name. I was still Amin Ra, mm -hmm. and D Dot was short for D Deliver of Deliverer of Prophecy. It was just D Dot. Yeah, it was just D Dot. It it was just yeah. D -dot. You know, we were still the mystery system. So if you read the credits, it said produced by Amin Ra and D Dot for the mystery system. You know, so we kept it. And then you know, if you if you look at the uh, the credits on Biggie's album, in uh, the the locks, you see all that all the information is still there as a mystery system. You know, it wasn't until we just we decided to like, um, you know, part and go separate ways. And D said he was going to do Crazy Cat. He he created the whole Crazy Cat um, catalog. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Mad Rapper. I did the Mad, Mad Rapper. Rapper. I just kept the mystery system. I just kept that going. And then he just created his own lane and just started doing his own thing. Yeah. I think as producers, though, you're, you're, you're given that luxury of being able to do if you want to do underground, if you want to do trap, if you want to do commercial, I think as a producer, you have that that leeway more so than if you're an MC and then you come out this way and then you start doing that. I think they, you know, you, you get yeah, that a little me, more. I think as producers, you, you, you're blessed. Right, because as producers, we even started doing R&B records. Like, yeah. you know, we came from hardcore hip hop producing, you know, Luther and, uh, you know, whoever. Mary, that's, like, that's we, we, Mary. we did Mary. SWV, Whitney Houston. That was another record that me and Ron did that never come out. We produced Whitney right. Houston remix, never came out. Ron right. did Aretha, Luther, I did Mary, wow. Total, SWV. So we ended up as producers to expand ourselves. We mm -hmm. did the damn uh the 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 I mean we had what's his name? Weird Al Yankovic spoof one of our songs. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, that's when you knew you made it. You know what I'm saying? It's like Wait, damn. That, that now, now you you brought something up. I just got the mad rapper, right? Yeah. Because the mad rapper, that's me. <laughs> at, at, at that time, I'm the mad rapper, right? right? But the mad rapper, your your character that you created, 
was so right and exact that even though you was talking about a certain crew of people, they had to respect your delivery and your and your fucking like your, your lyrically, technically, just you fucking sound. You're a fucking real MC. So it's like the shit with hip hop. As long as you got skills, skills, it don't really make a difference what you're saying when your delivery is right and exact. Is right and exact. So just as an applause for you to be able to create a character that's gonna st- stand the test of time. Like that's always gonna. Absolutely. Yeah, it's jokes. It's funny. It's comedy. But if you listen to D Dot and his delivery, the shit is right and exact. So, applaud you right fast on that right there. But once again, once again, I appreciate that. But Ron hit it right on the head. We got a chance for another fifteen minutes here, another chance. Mm-hmm. So we talked about me rapping in the '90s, and I'm trying to be a little. I'm confused in '93, '94. Here come '96, '97. And there's a, just this little window uh-huh. as the mad rapper. So it's this little. But I'm like, man, if, if, if I can slit, slide through that, I can get a second chance to express myself but, again. But what, what was the environment? I mean, what, what, what brought that on when you was like, yo, I can add on by doing this? And then you, what, what, what was the. Well, it, it wasn't, it wasn't the, it wasn't the, the mad rapper itself. It was uh-huh. the result of it, meaning, when we went into it, what you said was a little halfway true. There was nobody specific that I was mimicking, right. but the moment was based on the East Coast, West Coast beat. But it was nobody uh, specific. Mr. Black Rob. What's that other do with the, with the heavy bass voice? Wasn't that Black Rob? Some people thought it was Ghostface and Ray uh-huh. Kong. I always so thought it was Black Rob. Rob. It was always, you know, it was nobody in particular. But the point is, is that Tell him why you after, mad, son. <laughs> after I did it, because I pretended to be a rapper uh-huh. that was upset at Biggie. Mm. I got to give a shout out to DJ Clue. <laughs> applause, 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 DJ Clue. DJ Clue. And, 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 um, there was a, 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 a and r a promotion guy at Bad Boy. And, he came up to me after I did the Mad Rapper and said, Dot, this is your opportunity. So I didn't even realize it. This was after it came out. He said, this is your opportunity to rap again. So what I, here's what I want you to do. He plotted it out all for me. The Locks just did a freestyle for Clue. Let's go to the studio. You're going to pretend to break in and drop a verse. And I'm going to give it to Clue. Word. That's it. Right, fuck it. Let's that try. That, was that sounded Trevin? crazy to me. Sounded crazy. But let's was try. That Tre- was that Trevin? Was that Trevin mm-hmm. Jones? It's Mario. His name was Mario. Mario. Yes. I remember Mario. Yeah. You remember Mario? Yeah. Spanish Mario. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Well, he's a brilliant idea. Applaud brilliant idea. Him. Applause, so, applause, applause okay. to Mario. Big shout out to Mario. Yeah, it was Super Mario. Super Mario. Oh, Super Mario, promotion. Yeah, That's Super Mario. Mario. That's my guy. Super Mario. Hey, Super Mario says to me, right Genius. around, Dot. Genius. I said, what? I said, all right, cool. So the first rap I wrote as the Mad Rapper was that I represent for all my left back niggas, uh, mm-hmm. and left over the, over the Grease beat. Grease did the beat for the locks. And okay, it, it was Grease, on the Clue yeah. tape. So Clue put it on his tape. Mm. With an interlude and everything. I called him. I did a mad rap interlude. And from that <laughs> point on, next thing I know, I'm performing at the tunnel. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm spitting the verse all over the place. I was like, oh, shit. So then me and Tracy Lee do a record together as the mad rapper. Uh. Next thing I know, I get an offer for a record deal. And people don't even know that it's you at this time still. Because it was <laughs> they don't know it's me. You know what I'm saying? That was that, and that's the genius of it, man. That so was shout a, out to Super so. Mario, shout out to DJ Clue, because they actually helped launch the career of the Mad Rapper. Yo, big shout out to them. Yes, 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 yes. So yes what are you guys? Can, if we may ask, what are you guys currently working on? What can the people expect? Like, you know, what are you guys cooking up these days? Um, for me, right now, um, I still do my voiceovers, so I'm doing my voiceovers. Um. And I, I have uh, rules to this shit that I did on BET. That's part two. You know, it got actually cut, you know. So 
God willing, BT will start up again when it's good so we can finish, you know, uh, even start production on Rules to This Shit, you know, season two that mm-hmm. we had. Um, <clears throat> that's what I have going on personally. Mm-hmm. Um, and Ron can tell you what he has going on by himself. But jointly together, Ron and myself, um, we have a little something that's getting ready to drop um, called Songs That Almost Never Happen, mm. which is second mm. produced by Ron and myself. You know, um, mm. that's coming out soon. And... Um, we're still working on the Hitman documentary. So shout out to the Hitman. Mm-hmm. You know, all our brothers in arms with the production and the songwriting. Can, can, can you give us some of those other those other members of the Hitman so they can get yeah. their just yeah. too, no doubt? Shout out to Puffy, Diddy. Shout out to Stevie J. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Mario Winans. Shout mm-hmm. out to Chucky Thompson. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Young Lord. Shout out to Prestige. Shout out to Anthony Dent. Shout out to J-Dub. Of course, shout out to my OG Ron Lawrence. Shout out to uh, Rashad, Nasheem, uh, Nasheem Myrick. Um, shout out to Rashad. Shout out to uh, even the track masters because they, you know, Polk was an original hitman and mm-hmm. Buck Wild and Sean C and LV and Amadeus. Mm-hmm. Shout out to all those guys and anybody I'm missing, I'm sorry. Now, a special shout out to Nasheem because um, Carlos Brody. Uh, oh yeah, Carlos Brody. Carlos Brody was family. But quick special shout out to Nasheem simply because you know that was another. You know, that I would call him the, the third member of Two Kings and a Cypher production team because mm-hmm. he just bonded with me and Ron so crazy just as a guy, just as a man. You could brother. As, Love that dude. Of school. But once mm-hmm. we got to the production side, you know, they've they've had their own experiences together on production, me and him. And, you know, he was just a, a good dude. So the Hitmen were real special to us. So we are collaboratively with all of the Hitmen working on a documentary that hopefully the world will see in 2021. Hopefully, yes, we need that. Yeah, we need that. Working on, um, you know, oh yeah, my book right here. I, you know, I got to show my book. Got my copy. Ooh, where are you? Yeah, I got. I got put one in the mail for you. Right, because I tried to buy it and he, his All link right. was down. So you know, he, that's, that's why good. Nah, but I, I would support you. it. I don't want people to think I wouldn't support you. <laughs> yeah, where can the people get this book at? Where I'm from? Yes. Yeah. Just go to thisisron.com. This is Ron.com. This is Ron, Ron. Like this is 50. This is Ron.com. Okay. I'm going to put that in the little Got chat it. section here. So everybody yeah. go check that out. This is also, Ron.com. I, yeah. Also, I got the, the streaming site popping off. It's called streamways.com. So, you know, it's just an independent site. It's like Netflix. There, there you is, go. There it is. This is Ron.com. Here we go. Where I'm from. So, are you guys have anything on, on the beat set that you guys are working out for for like any other artists or stuff like that? Any other placements we can expect to hear? Um, for me, I still you know I still have a lot of irons in the fire out there. So I have a a, a young brother out here in Philadelphia that I mess with. His name is Riz Deluxe. He's mm-hmm. produced for various people out here in Philly, but he just recently put out a little EP. Um, he just got his first placement with T.I., so congratulations to Riz. Mm-hmm. Um, nice. So he got his very first placement with, you know, T.I.'s up-and-coming album coming, so, you know, I wish him luck on that. Okay. I mean, I'm associated with a lot of artists out here in Philadelphia that I still do some mentoring for, some consulting. So there's a young lady named Petty Levels out here that she's a big hip-hop influencer. she got millions of followers doing videos, so her, part, her manager, Shantae, has allowed me to be a part of their team. Mm-hmm. Um, I mess with, you know... Uh, songwriters and producers out here. So we have an artist named Suzanne Christine, who's a very good singer out here. So I'm working on her project, me and Riz, just a little EP that mm-hmm. we got coming for her. So I still, you know, it's not my everyday anymore. You know, we were letting it, me and Ron, you know, the young kids, just their moment, do their thing. But, you know, like 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 Hakeem said earlier, you don't want to be too overconfident, but, you know, when you have talent, you have talent, and in certain areas it doesn't go away, and people still appreciate it. So we still do get the calls for production and different things and you know we get to at this stage of our lives we get to pick and choose what we want and which right. ones you mm-hmm. want to go which ones you don't so you know yeah. and that's the comfort comfort zone you get to do after the hard 20 years we put in straight from 1988 to mm-hmm. you know literally 2008 <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. Yeah. Now, there's 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 two things that we didn't talk about that you know i i think it's important for our audience you know one you know, Ron is a filmmaker and has a, a, a phenomenal documentary called The Founding Fathers. So I, I would like for Ron to talk about that real quick. And of course, what you did with Crazy Cat uh, D is just a whole nother, like, you know, 
impact on our culture that that you know needs to be acknowledged and you know because that's a whole nother thing so ron if you could just talk about founding fathers real quick and your you know your career as a filmmaker and then let's trans transition to dot with crazy cat founding fathers is a um documentary i started back in 2005 with a you know friend that i grew up with named hassan poor and we kind of wanted to document the history of the music scene going on in New York City um, and in various other boroughs, you know, besides the Bronx. You got Brooklyn, Queens, and, and Manhattan, and, you know, these guys, they were putting it down. And, you know, my brother, specifically growing up as a kid, I saw him um, doing a lot, and, and I wanted to capture um, his legacy, you know, and I also wanted to capture the legacy of what was going on in the neighborhood. So we decided to come together and do a documentary so we could document the information and we, we didn't want it to get lost. So in 2005, we, we started to guerrilla style it. We went out, we grabbed, we grabbed cameras and we went to the neighborhoods and started uh, finding a lot of the, the old school cats that were like forgotten about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was fortunate because um, back in 2000, 2001, 2002, I was able to go back to school and learn learn how to edit and learn how to shoot on film and everything like else. So I, and I took that information and I applied it to what I knew, and um, and created a founding fathers in around 2000. And now we were finished with the product. Now you know over the years because I'm you know affiliated with KRS One in the Bronx and the whole nine yards. Although you know I'm Jersey, you know born and raised, you know I get associated with the Bronx and I often find myself having to defend. The Bronx, even though I'm not from the Bronx, you know, <laughs> and, and then when I saw, then when I saw the Founding Fathers, and I didn't even know Ron, that was Ron's. I just saw it on YouTube, and I'm watching it, and it, you know, it kind of helped. I ha had to readjust my uh, perspective on, you know, how this culture of ours came came into being, and then, you know, being able to reach out Ron directly and you know D dot directly is just. It's a blessing because y'all my brothers and we just have a relationship really outside of the music, just on some we our conversations for both of y'all just be like, you know, we it ain't really about this, it's about the brotherhood and the, and the friendship. So, you know, I appreciate Ron for putting that documentary together. It's a very thorough, detailed documentary called The Founding Fathers, uh, narrated by Chuck D. Um, so all of our viewers out there, I need y'all to go to YouTube, find that clip, make sure you save it, download it, watch that, support my man Ron. D dot crazy cat like so many things came through crazy cat crazy cat you know it was a place that you know I found myself just when I needed some refuge and I needed to kind of like duck away I would head over and see my brother and it you know you always have it like going on and you know me being naive and not really you know kind of understanding the the pieces you know when I went to crazy cat it was always love 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 like like brotherhood friendship business was right and then you know later on i hear you know all the crazy stories and i'm like nah that's not what i know so i would like for you to explain to the people what crazy cat was and what you were able to accomplish there well um in 98 i wanted to do my own thing once i left bad boy so i wanted to do crazy cat but i wasn't really prepared to do a, a full record label mm -hmm. so you know god bless rest in peace to my lawyer ed woods mm -hmm. um he one of the good, great things that came from Crazy Cat was I was able to do this hybrid deal where I was able to own my masters Word. and not spend all the money that was given to me. So, you know, I ended up not being too far in debt when it was all said and done to them because I was able to manipulate the deal in a certain way and, and reuse the money a few times for things. Mm -hmm. And people, I, I can get into that later on. That's a whole other subject. But mm -hmm. the goal was for me to be able to do some of the things that we couldn't do on Bad Boy the way we wanted to. Um, because I initially went to Puff and I wanted to do Crazy Cat under Bad Boy because mm -hmm. I I saw Puff moving into a very pop lane, which obviously that's where the graduation process should yeah. go. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know? But there was still the G-Deps and the Shines and the Black Robs of the world that I wanted to rock with. You know, the yeah. Smith & Wessons, the, the mm -hmm. Spectre Dex of the world. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And he, he didn't really want to do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? With his graduation process, not that he, you know, he started that way, but now right. we're getting you the know, trajectory. I'm going right. here. I got to go there. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, two hundred fifty thousand sales ain't really gonna do it for him, but for mm -hmm. Crazy Cat, that's phenomenal. 
You're right. Absolutely. You know, that's what Duck Down is doing and these type of guys. And I, that's all I saw Crazy Cat as. Of course, I wanted to be Bad Boy, but I people think that I was trying to be Bad Boy. But to, to do what Bad Boy did, there was no way I was going to do that the same way because I would have to put in the same amount of work, time, and effort and things that Puffy did outside of the music business that I couldn't do, mm-hmm. that I wouldn't do. That's right. Like that. Couldn't and wouldn't. Wouldn't, yeah. So going into it, you know that there's a cap. And I was comfortable with that. But mm-hmm. I also knew that the pieces that I was putting together, the Young Gurus, the Kanye's, the Coptics, the Charlemagne's, Shout they ain't had no cap. my brother. They ain't had no caps. So if I stay attached to that as well as what I'm doing, and when I say cap, meaning meaning there was no cap in what I was doing, I was saying, but I, I wasn't worried, worried about selling 10 million records of diamond artists at that time. If I could have got me a fucking uh, a Picasso Black who I signed or or Desert Rose, which was Mashonda and Lady May together, mm-hmm. if they would have did a gold record, I would have ran outside naked. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying to you? Like that was success for me getting started with the little thing I had. So mm-hmm. to me, five million records wouldn't have been a, a, a failure for me. Mm-mm. So that's what I meant, Cap. Why I wasn't, of course, I wanted that and I was trying to mm-hmm. make records for that. So mm-hmm. that's what Crazy Cat was. Crazy Cat was an incubator, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Mad Rapper, I did the, the, the album there. I had Raekwon and Puff and mm-hmm. Eminem, 50 Cent. Mm-hmm. So I was able to put together, a, a, in my opinion, a phenomenal first effort that showed my connections and mm-hmm. showed my range. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So right. Crazy yeah, Cat just... ended up being a blessing in disguise for me, even though I didn't have the commercial success and the longevity that a lot of other people had. But when I look at some of my constituents, mm-hmm. a lot of them didn't either. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Not, like there's, not every one there, of the great producers has a great label that they started attached to them. Right. Like there's like different business models, right? And, you know, my business model is this. So for what we're trying to achieve, I'm putting these parts together to get to this. And then when I get here, my my objectives might change. And then you start to, you know... So I definitely it's understand. It's levels. Devil, it's levels to this yeah. shit, right? Yeah. So it's right. not that you know you you create you're doing crazy cat to stay here, but right now I'm gonna get to here, and right. then I'm gonna get to the next. I'm gonna get to the next level and whatever. But whatever. I felt like I was still gonna get to work with Bad Boy. I still was gonna get that work because when I left, I still executive produced Black Rob, still executive produced the band, still mm. was on MTV making of the band. So I was still. Be, I still had access to that commercial world and to go get that money. But mm-hmm. here, I wasn't going to put the pressure on 10 million records on my artists. Right, right. I just wanted to put together a nice collection of music that people could see the D-Dot style of what I hear. My, mm-hmm. my bop. Wow. You know what I mean? And Ron Lawrence wasn't separated from that because he produced a song on the Mad Rappers album. Mm-hmm. So it was. It still was no separation there. We still right, still collective still effort. Still into still the fold, together. You know that's, yeah, and that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. Even like the separation, but we're together. Right. That's that. That's how black. That's how brothers need to function. You know, like you know, we need to make decisions for right now. But bro, you know, we in spirit, we still locked, and to keep that pure and honest is refreshing. And after thirty years, like it's wonderful to see where both you guys are individually. And together as two kings in a cipher, no right. doubt. Well, yeah, applaud to you and focus, though. Thank you for having us, brother. We love but, you, man. Well, I oh, love you too, yo, folk. Do you have another question? Because I got one more question I want to ask the brothers. I, I just want to thank them for for taking the time out and and dropping all this knowledge, and I'm just thankful for that. That's all I got to mm-hmm. say. Yeah. So the la- my last yeah. question for both of you is, what's your favorite record? you were involved in and what's your favorite record that you're not involved in? Mm. Rob, what's up? What, whoever's first. What's your favorite record that you're involved in in, the fa- in your favorite project that you're not involved in? Hmm. Well, I guess I think, you know, I know it's probably gonna sound cliche, um, but my favorite record is probably the Benjamin is not because of the impact, but because of the process to get it done. Mm-hmm. Little Kim verse Biggie Oof. did his first over the original beat in LA. I wasn't there, and I changed the beat after he died. <sighs> um, you know, I helped co- co-write the, the Little Kim verse because we gave her a chance to write it the first time, and it didn't come out right. So I co-wrote the verse with her, 
and then to have you know the locks burn it down and puff burn it down and to see where it went mm. for me and for them you know that's and but the process was fun making the beat mm -hmm. remixing it you know and the artists that were on it and to watch them perform it i actually got a chance to be on the stage with them performing it, so that's probably my favorite mm -hmm. and then the one that i wasn't involved with I'd probably say that I, you know, there's a few, there's a few projects, but I, I probably would have wanted to have been in the room when that first Wu Tang album was made. Ooh. For me, that probably would have wow. been something that I would have really, really enjoyed because wow. I was a fan of them dudes like no other. Out the gate, bro. <laughs> that shit was Out just the fucking like, oh, gate. Shit, what is Out this? Out the gate. Uh, but you know, Big shout to Fabulous, big shout to Jada Kiss, but we all knew as soon as the Benjamins came on, game was over. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Fab, I love you, but yeah, if the yeah. Benjamins comes on, just shut it down. Sorry. Right. All right, Ron, what's your favorite project you were a part of and your favorite project you weren't a part of? That's that's very hard, man, because, um, I mean, I could tell a story for, for all those records, man, you know? I mean, just working together with DDOT, and, 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 and doing all those records, you know, from Money, Power, Respect to, to, to Hematize mm -hmm. and just just putting those records together and then how we put those records together, you know, and it, the chemistry that it took to make it happen and just watching it go from A to Z, watching those records get made, mm -hmm. man, I mean, it's... It's, 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 it's magic. Just listen. And then you, you hear it on the radio when it's all said and done till this day. Like, you know, satellite radio. These records are still getting played. White man still walking across our lawn bringing them checks. You know what I'm saying? These records are getting played. Publish like, it is crazy. Like they were made yesterday, you know? <laughs> man, oh, publish oh, how are you today? And the mechanicals and the publishing on them shits is fucking crazy. Wow. Okay. And then for me, like, you know, you know, I'm a, I'm a big Pete for, on the production side. I'm a big Pete mm -hmm. fan, so I would love to see uh, how, they, how those guys make those records. Because Bomb Squad. Bomb Squad. Yeah, yeah, sonically, when I listen to those records and I mm -hmm. listen to the samples and how they just put those things together, you know, it just amazes me. Yeah, that we sonically, that's a word that, you know, jokers sonically, today, man. they don't they don't understand. Sonically, it's like when you hear like Larry Smith production, that's like, almost damn near 40 years old, sonically still compares to anything being done. The Bomb Squad sonically still compares to anything. Yeah, but listen, being listen to what he just said. Listen to what he just said. I just said the woo. Hmm. Sonically. Sonically. That's not exactly the pinnacle mm -hmm. of no pin, doubt. But you know, but that I, I, yeah, I'm but that's that, that, but that again, again, who you are, D dot, and what you <laughs> <describe>, <laughs> that says, right on time. Is, you know, it, it's more, it's the feel and the aura. And I the would have been in that studio fixing all that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't hear that? Yeah, 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 I get a bass. Where's your bass line, bro? Where's the bass line? What's up with that's that stare? It's all over the place. I was listening that's to that's why I always get Dr. Dre so much. Yeah. Because you can just hear a pin drop when you listen to him. Yeah, music. you can hear a pin drop in that production. And that's where Ron, that's where Ron's ear was. You know what I'm saying? It was like, holy shit. You know, and that's what I said. When he would hear my production, it was he, he would have to just like, uh, I got you, homie. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> give, me, give me 24 hours. Just give me 20. Jesus Christ. Wow. What, you know what I mean? yeah, that's it's crazy. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, fellas, yo, 30 years, two kings in the cipher. The single was called Moving On Them. Yes. You know, for all our viewers out there, please go to YouTube, put in two kings in a cipher, moving on them. Watch the video. You're going to see a special cameo from your man, Hakeem Green, with the flat top face. <laughs> right. And see me screw facing you. I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm screw facing nah, you. you. Actually, you were checking my chick. You was like, yeah. you, <laughs> you was looking at my chick like, come on, why are you dancing with this character right now? You know? <laughs> Crazy. No, but, no, but, yo, but, listen. Let's dance this time next year again the same way because next year is Ron and I thirtieth anniversary for the from Pyramids the Projects the full album with yes. for the brothers who ain't here with yeah. Daffy was a black man you know we had a song called Daffy was a black man mm, that's right John you sent that to me yeah yeah right, yeah right. so let's dance again this time next year for another thirty year anniversary because hopefully we'll have some more players involved because there was a lot more players involved for the yeah. brothers who ain't here was actually written by mm -hmm. Raz Baraka. So it wow. was a poem. So I Miss just, Raz Baraka. 
Mayor Raz Baraka, yes. Mayor, the Honorable, the Honorable Mayor Raz Baraka, who's responsible for my company 24 hours apiece. Let me just put that out there. Right. You know, so, so, here we come. so yeah. these things, so all these things are connected more than people know. So yes, next, sir. Year, next year, this time, let's dance again. Yeah. And, you know, because we got, uh, with that one, it's a lot more intense because it was a lot more going on, a lot mm -hmm. more song production, a lot more people involved. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I definitely want to have you guys back on before that individually because okay. Ron, Ron and I are working on a project, an EP, right? right? And, yeah. you know, we, we have our conversations. Right. And then you and I, you know, we get it in, you know, about Colin Kaepernick, State of Black People. We both, I mean, I have these conversations with both of you guys. Like, we are constantly on build mode. I talk to you guys, you know, sometimes two, three times a week. Right. And those conversations need to be broadcast live so we can kind of look, get a little deeper into the consciousness of you individually. And that's going to happen real soon. Yo, big applause to Two Kings in the Cypher, Derek mm -hmm. D. Dot Angeletti, Ron Amin Ra Lawrence, Hitman, Crazy hey. Cat. You know, the, just, just, just the whole thing. Streamways is a streaming platform that my man Ron created. And we're we going to get that popping. We need to do some stuff on Streamways to help him. And, and, and to the people out. out there, real quick, anybody that's looking to get their content seen or heard or just another avenue, you know, Streamways is a black owned streaming service that we have yes. to try to support. We're not saying stop what you're doing, we're saying have an alternative, have an option. And it just so has an option that there's a black man that looks like you, that, mm -hmm. that, that wants to get the same goals accomplished as you. So, you know, that's to anybody watching and any post this that you post up later, you know, we'd like them to try to support because some of the things that we're doing, we're hoping to get it on Streamways in a bigger way so, mm -hmm. so it can get as much popularity as some of these other streaming services mm -hmm. that we support. So let's support Ron, Black Yo, Black. yo, spell, spell, stream, spell yeah. Streamways for the people so they know where to go. S T R E A M W A Z E dot yeah. com. Streamways. Yeah. All and, content and, creators, all those content creators, film, things like that. Stream. You want to do some live stream concerts? We right. Got it too. Right. Mm -hmm. That's 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 so you know that's the beauty of the now. That's the now. Focus, that's it was so a pleasure cool. meeting you. Do that's me a wild, favor brother. next time, dog. You're gonna have to tone it down a little bit because you talk a little bit too much for me. <laughs> you know so um <laughs> tone it down a little bit and so that point I, got you. Good, you know well, I, mean? I like to listen, man. I like to listen. You know I mean? yeah. I'll be ready next time though. Indeed, indeed. Thank you, brothers. Yo, 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 thank, thank you. Have a two evening. kings in the cipher. Give it up, y'all. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Salute, salute. Salute. Peace.